Come on, let's go. This could be a setup. We don't know. This story could go global. If you were followed, we weren't. 
I don't understand how he found me. Mr. Kamir, one week ago, your people told our agency, international media, that you would fight this election to ensure democracy. Look, Miss Eastman, I want to be clear about this. I only need cover for eight, nine months max. Fine. Let's get something straight from the outset. We might be small beer to you, but this is a quality local newspaper. What about ethics, integrity? We set the standard in Sussex. It's what we're called. Sorry. It matters. So if you get the job, have you got a place to stay locally? Laurel Street. Brave. Mr. Robertson, do I have the contract? Sussex standard rate? The interviews with a local health campaigner, Judy Stewart. She's written a book on toxins and, uh... It's not the Middle East, I know, but... It's what reporters do, isn't it? Heading to Barlow's farm. Let's go take a look. Tony, what's happened? Just give us a sec. We'll clear the scene. Is she going to be all right? Forty boiler. Carbon monoxide fumes seeped into the daughter's bedroom. Mother couldn't wake her this morning. Oh, God. It's not looking good. Our bodies are assaulted by toxins in so many ways. You've achieved so much. I mean, the book, the campaign, it's really raised awareness. And so were your newspaper's coverage. Oh, can I check? Um, the word organo... Organophosphate, the bad boys that we will need to avoid. It's all in there. Farm and factory workers, soldiers, crew, people affected Great every stuff, day Judy. by... Judy, I do have another meeting to go to. OK, no worries. Bye. Hi. Just water, right. please. I meant what I said. So did I. I'm not giving up on us, Joe. Thanks. I've left London. I've come here to be with you. I've got a job on a local paper. This isn't just about us, is it? Joe, what's wrong? I've been suspended from all air traffic control duties. Why? 
A Jasper 737 failed to reduce to its final approach speed before landing. Oh, God. I finally got them to go around, but it was weird. Like they were asleep. Anyway, it's classed as a near miss, so... Oh, Joe, they can't think that Even you I'm beginning to wonder if I made a mistake. My head... It was the day after your... My head was full of dead politicians, photographers. Two days, Helen, two days before you called me. I'm sorry. It was mad over there. I, I didn't know whether Tom was going to live. Oh, well, I know just how that feels. If I lose my job, my career... Oh, you would. It sounds like the pilots were at fault. Well, they're certainly keeping a tight lid on it. Good evening, madam. Good evening, sir. Hello, Greg. Ben. Mrs. Terrell. And we will announce the new aircraft. At the International Conference, along with the new routes. It'll be an excellent boost for the team. And do our people need a boost? <laughs> well, we're outperforming the economy, so uh, everyone knows their jobs are safe. As safe as houses, or as a JASP aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> of all Charles companies, JASP Air is the closest to his heart. That's why I don't allow mobile phones in my dining room. <laughs> Uh, our daughter has some health issues. Yes, they're wonderful. If you'll all please excuse me. Right. Mm -hmm. The same aircraft. No, no, look, uh, that's fine. You... You tell Alan to come to my office first thing. Will you wait to move in until after Tanya's operation? You must be so delighted it's gone through. Dreadful business renting, isn't it? Oh, before all this, I had my fair share of flatting. How did you and Charles meet? I was the first Mrs. Jasper's PA for 15 years. Charles hated being a widower. He proposed to me in Geneva less than six months after Elizabeth's death. I didn't realise that. That he'd been married before. That Charles was such a romantic. Oh, no! <laughs> no! It was the annual aviation conference. He was very quiet tonight. She has a lot on her mind. Of course. Family is very important, as is a wife. Two of our biggest investors were at that table tonight. Eve needs to understand the wife of a CEO has a very important role to play. November 15 Tango, turn right heading 240 degrees and descend to altitude 3000 feet, cleared ILS QNH 1013. 15 Tango, head 240 down to 3000, cleared ILS. Just 313, reduce the final approach speed. Aero 1 to Alpha, reduce speed all 160 knots to 4 DME and contact tower 124.225. 160 knots to 4, 124.225, 1 to Alpha. 125, uh, Just 313, confirm speed. 170. Just 313, go around, I say again, go around, standard Mr. Pro to acknowledge. Just 313, go around, I say again, go around and stand at Mr. Broach, acknowledge.
So it's definitely the same aircraft as the Flight 313 approach incident? Absolutely. Echo Lima. After that, we had to take the aircraft off the line. It's in engineering. Have you spoken to the engine manufacturer? No. Call them. Today. Keep me informed. Thanks. Remind me a bit of the boss. The five o'clock shadow. The cynicism. And you were both shortlisted for the big award. And lost. You should get back on Twitter. Well, when I've got something to tweet about, I will. Johnny! <laughs> hey, where'd you get back? I'll see you at the ward. April, four months on the Hong Kong Standard. Really suits it. Life to save. Johnny, before you go, do you know anything about a girl that was brought in from Barlow's farm? It's CO poisoning, yeah, she'll be all right. I'm going to be awake, though. Here, um, meet for a drink, yeah? Yeah, great. Helen, you emailed the photo yet? Yeah, in a minute. I need it now for the website. Join us, Helen. So, what have you got? We need to fill a gaping hole on page four. Well, Tasha's done a piece on the pesticides campaigner. Judy Stewart, good, clean copy. Starting to nod off. Uh, I've got a profile piece on the new risk assessment management. Almost uh, asleep. Uh, no, OK. Uh, or a small news story on Barlow's chicken farm. And when... asleep. What have you got lined up this afternoon? Uh, so far, just the local girl who's got a scholarship for the RAF. That's just a picture story. Reschedule it and find a location with a plane in shot. Anything else? Well, there was a near miss. Gatwick Airport. When? 16. Old news. You want a story on Gatwick? Yeah. Give him a ring. Some sort of break-in. And if you lot have got nothing else, which you obviously haven't, let's put some crime on the page. Hmm? Chop, chop. <laughs> what? <A bit> vintage. Unquestioning loyalty. But then, of course, you and Eve understand that. So, the procedure for loading a shotgun. Safety on. Safety on. Load the gun. Load the gun. Are you trying to do away with your grandfather? Look, this is an easy mistake to make. This is a 20 ball cartridge for your gun. We put it in there. I can't see it. I put in the 12 bore that belongs there. Now, if I pull this trigger, it'll blow the barrels and possibly my head clean apart. Whoops. <laughs> well, it's all part of the learning process. Things you can't see can sometimes be very dangerous. Dave. And we've had to cancel six flights. 
Why is it still in engineering? Alan Morgan has confirmed it's not an engine performance issue. Well, the power plants have carried out successful ground work. Well, there's your answer. Put the aircraft back into service. Yeah, but it's not just about engine performance. Look, if Alan Morgan has signed it off, the CAA will be satisfied. And so will I. Civil Aviation Authority. Press office, please. Yes, I understand that, but... Just flies fully in accordance with CAA rules and guidelines. I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? Just flies fully in accordance with CAA rules and guidelines. Yes, of course they do. May I ask who's calling? So what's this hashtag carbon monoxide tweet? How did you know about the near miss at Gatwick? Then what we'll see will give you a much better idea. Right. <clears throat> now, deep inside there are the oil bearing seals we were talking about. Air pressure keeps them sealed. So, by design. Wait. Alan. So you're telling me that. Echo Lima's engine seals leak oil. <laughs> Just small amounts. We'll sort of replace them. I've told you, they're designed to leak. Changing the seals is like a complete engine overhaul. You know the cost of that. We need to cut costs if we're to meet the third quarter targets. Uh, Alan, I come from the offshore oil industry. If, if a seal is compromised... This is totally you... different. It's not a safety issue. Really? What about Flight 313? So then I called the CAA, who says, Jasper Air flies in accordance with CAA rules and guidelines. I suppose that's their standard reply. But I hadn't mentioned Jasper. They answered a question I hadn't asked. Earlier domestic flights have been cancelled, so there's no reason to think the pilots were fatigued. So you think carbon monoxide? Perhaps. There's some stuff on the internet about CO leaks from aircraft, but... So we should speak to a pilot at Gatwick? No, not Gatwick. That's where Joe's based, I promise. Well, Shoreham Airport, then? It's only, like, half an hour away. What's the matter? Come on, this is... This isn't just some protest story. I've been stonewalled by the Civil Aviation Authority and Britain's largest growing airline, not to mention a government department. Think about it. Think about what, who I'd be taking on we'd be taking on. Well, you know what happened to the last guy I worked with. Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I have a word? Yeah. I'll see you out there. Yeah, OK. There's been a few calls about Flight 313. I thought it was agreed that once the facts were cleared with air traffic control, the air accident team would conclude their investigation. The calls came into the press office. Hello, Helen Eastman, and this is Natasha. Hi. Oh, yes, the journalist. How can I help? Could carbon monoxide be a risk to pilots? Sure. It caused many plane crashes. But that was years ago. Well, let me show you. See the white square of the circle? See your detector. If the air is contaminated with carbon monoxide, the circle changes color. OK. Thank you. Sure.
Come. J.D. tells me the online hits for Natasha's interview with Judy Stewart are double those than any other article. My brief was to give the readers what they want. Clearly, they want more issue-led column inches. So what do you have in mind? I have a lead on a very big story, an issue very relevant to our readers. Is it another carbon monoxide expose? Give me ten days. Four. Eight. Six. A week and Natasha. You're too good for me. And then get yourself down to the museum at Gatwick. <laughs> you must be Molly's father. Helen Eastman, standard. Jeremy Adamson. We're very proud of Molly. Right, so, <laughs> chip off the old blog. What about over here? Oh, no, Molly handled this beautifully. It'll be fine. You seem to know a bit about aviation. <laughs> Not as much as she thought she did. Chas Spare. That's so funny. Helen's boyfriend was the air traffic controller when I'm sure playing. Captain Adamson doesn't want to talk shop when he's off duty. On or off duty, you should know. Air crew can't talk to the media. Molly. That was unprofessional. Sorry, I but just... But useful. Let me see the notes to the Judy Stewart interview. Crew. Air crew. Hi. Hi. What the hell were you doing, ringing Jasper? Well, you asked me to try. I asked for your help, Helen, not destroy my career. All this crap about carbon monoxide tweets. I've dropped all that CO stuff. My career is hanging by a thread and you're making things worse. No, I am simply... So you didn't call Jasp? I called Jasp, but I'm no amateur. I didn't use the office line or leave my name. <gasps> if they know it was me, they went to a great deal of trouble to find out. Sorry, say again? Yeah, okay. All right, thanks for that. I never knew you were a pilot. I'm not. My dream was to own an airline, not fly for one. Peter Stevens rang me this morning. He was curious to know why my CEO was asking so many questions about his faulty engine seals. Well, if he has an issue... I've known Peter since Harrow. I was conducting business with him while you were, no doubt, still in short trousers. Echo Lima has been a great concern for me. And after what happened with Flight 313, I, I had to build a picture. And I've spent a lifetime building strong business links. Apollo 13 flew round the moon and back with Jim Lovell on board. Perhaps man's greatest survival story. Two days before the launch, an astronaut was replaced because they thought he had German measles. Difficult call for NASA, but the mission had to come first. He was expendable. 
get the contact details from Judy Stewart, the air crew she interviewed for her book. Do you fancy lunch at the cafe? My treat. I was just going to grab a sandwich. I'm meeting Johnny there on Monday. Oh, what time? Um, one-ish? Yeah, I can make that. You do. Yeah, what's it? Uh, bloody vandals of oil everywhere. Key, pass me a 15 mil for the oil filter, will you? It's gonna take a good 10 hours to fix. What do you need to fix it? I mean, that. Well, we, uh, we reckon some things deserve to be preserved. Besides, young engineers train on it and it gives them a start in life. It's a bit of a blonde question. But how do you start a jet engine? Well, it. Don't start like a car with a battery. You need air, and lots of it, usually ducted from an APU, small engine at the tail of the airplane. And once the engine's running, it, uh, it sends the bleed air back through the same ducting to the cabin. Bleed air? The air that's bled off from the compression section of the engine. Pressurizes the aircraft cabin. So the air you breathe on a plane comes from the engine? Eh? Well, lucky they have detectors. For what? Well, carbon monoxide. Surely it would warn if stuff like oil got into the air. Only light aircraft need CO detectors, love. Jets have no detection systems. Uh, I prefer mayo on mine, thanks. Might not have a choice when you fly Jasper. Find out what shit's in this stuff. There is a workplace problem resulting in chronic and acute illness amongst flight crew, both pilots and cabin crew. Further, we are concerned that passengers may also be suffering from similar symptoms to those exhibited by flight crew. Is it happening in the workplace? For us, the pilot association, the aircraft? And the answer, undoubtedly, must be yes, listening to what the speakers have said. In 50 yards, turn left. Your destination is then on the left. If he spoke to Judy Stewart, then maybe he'll talk to us. Hang on, Carl. for Captain Morris. David Morris? He's not on a trip. Look, I don't have time for this right now. Mum, we're going to hospital now. I'm sorry, is he unwell? Will he be... Who are you? Is he ill because of cockpit fumes? My contact said that Just he was... Just leave us alone. For years, the tobacco industry was successfully able to deny that there was a connection between smoking and lung cancer. In the end, the court proved that there was. The aviation industry is now in the same position that the, the tobacco industry was when it was brought to book. Both these industries have traded people's health and safety for profit. And now the aviation industry is at the end of its tobacco road. As Jasp commented. Standard football, like the regulators, word for word. Do you buy into all this? Well, I'm, it's obvious that what he Nothing said. Nothing is obvious until it's been proven. Let me get this straight. 
you think that the plane your young man watched nearly nosedive was in some way faulty? Yes, some sort of fumes got into the aircraft. Which caused the pilots to nod off? Yes, and then clearly it was more of a... Yes, it, it, bell's ringing. Good work. So stay on it, but nothing goes live until we can back it up 100%. Tasha? Nothing goes live until we back it up 100%. Meanwhile, have a look at these. Take your pick. Well, you said I had a week to work on the story. Yes, but not to the exclusion of everything else. <laughs> and Helen, you may want to look at that one. And shut the door. Yeah, Bruce, how has it hanging? Yeah, listen, cast your pickled mind back to the 90s, yeah? This is serious. Your time on the Melbourne News? Was there something about pilot sickness? Flight safety, the Senate. Check it out for me, will you? <laughs> Thank you. You get the champagne. I'll see you in Hi. Let's go and sit over there. So where do you want to sit? I don't know. Somewhere up here. But look, before we do that, can I just get one photograph to remember the race? Oh, Helen. Oh, please, come on. Over there. Here? Um, I was thinking maybe if I send a car around for you. There we go. Thank you. I've got to go. Really? You've got a big day tomorrow. I need a drink. Oh, come on. They will have heard the cockpit recordings. You've got some messages. You check them. No, just, you know, don't let Helen complicate things. Jasper cool right now, but, well, they know about Maastricht. This could be all dead and buried on Monday. Pilot error. Just let it lie. Make Helen let it lie. Coffee on. Oh, uh, thanks, darling. I'll um, get one at the office. See you later. See you later. You haven't forgotten. No, of course not. No. I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Mrs. Morris. Jasper Eyre are very sorry to learn of Captain Morris's continuing poor health. I am able to confirm that the current sickness pay arrangements will continue and that his pension will be unaffected. Thank you. 
it would be helpful to have a little more detail on the prognosis. I've already told you David's brain tumour is terminal. Yes, yes, we are aware of that. Tragic. Can the medical advisors give any indication of how long? Front fan here, okay. The compression section along here. And the old bearing seals are around here somewhere. That's right, there's multiple ones going along down here, yes. Okay. Oh, oh Dan, I'm sorry. I I'm gonna have to dash. Really sorry. Can you come show yourself out again? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Helen Eastman? Uh, last desk. Even a tiny amount of carbon monoxide and knocking out. Headaches, lethargy. What's all this about? There have been some reports of pilots making mistakes and, uh, not paying attention. We think it's something to do with the air coming through from the engine. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Captain speaking, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna nod off for a bit. <laughs> if you could just keep your ears and eyes open for us. At the hospital? For what? Sick air crew, maybe? You're trying to turn me into some sort of whistleblower? She's trying to help out her fella. Listen, Tanya's young. She'll, she'll bounce back. It's major surgery. What if... Tony. Hey. How's it going? She was lucky, the Barlow kid. Yeah, um... Tony, you need to pick your brains a little about burning oil. What, like a chip pan fire? No, no, no. Oil, oil. Like this. Synthetic oil. Burns a lot hotter than chip fire. Temperatures in a jet engine get up to four, five hundred degrees. So when it burns... It turns to vapour. Nice chemical cocktail. Stick to chips. More calories, but far less dangerous in the long run. So what's in this stuff, then? Let's pull it up on the VDMS. It's the MSDS data sheet. It's all there. Tony, I love you. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Now, this is what it said. Mist by heated product may be harmful by inhalation. That's exactly as I read it on the screen. I'm telling you, it was really... Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. No, it was, it was totally beneficial. Chop, chop. <sighs> Always in the forehead. What are you laughing at? <sighs> Come on, pick up. Helen? Hi. You got my message? Yeah, reinstated. Look, I thought tonight maybe we could go out and... All right. But tomorrow would be great. Joe? Joe, are you still there?
stick to the floor, so don't go anywhere near the desks, computers, until you learn the ropes. Natasha, or should I say good night? Uh, good morning, Reverend. Hello. Yes, good night. Hi. <laughs> In 2010, the High Court of Australia upheld a ruling that inhaling heated engine oil fumes was harmful. Just negligence, large sums of money have changed hands. Hush money. Well, or blood money. Make no mistake, Natasha, you're entering dangerous territory. This is a huge industry and there's too much at stake. You must take great care. some water. Can you check the kids? Okay. I know. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Did so. Oh, was Joe uh... being reinstated? Oh, great. So uh, my lack of sleep came from an interesting chat I had from a Reverend Woodley in Australia. Don't tell me you found religion. <laughs> no, he's an Australian senator. Chaired an inquiry on contaminated air on aircraft. Now I was thinking if maybe we could get like a British politician who could just. A bit early for all that. Don't worry. Coffee will fix that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, it's high pressure. Q and ancient one zero one three. Runway two six left. Come in. Can I have a quick word? Yes, of course. What's wrong? I don't think I can do this anymore. Oh, come on, Alan. It's not like you giving up at the first obst. Helen. Helen. Just, I just leave the door open. You've been ill for a while, but once the tumour was diagnosed, it was just a matter of weeks. You were right. David was convinced that flying had made him ill. And did he tell you why he thought that? Something to do with the air on board the aircraft. I know he told the airline and his unions, but... Did he specifically mention fumes? And his uniform often used to stink of them. He told me that if I ever smelt fumes on board, that I was to tell him. And did you? A few times, yeah. 
You tried to get me to give up flying, but we needed the money. I just got this from David's solicitor, on David's instructions. It's company policy not to inform passengers following a suspected contaminated air event. That's incredible. What else is there? They're, they're JASP, some technical data. The air that I was breathing on board the JASP air aircraft that I flew was pumped full of dangerous toxins. This is a section of the bleed air ducting system from a JASP aircraft that I flew. I won't explain how I got hold of it. Suffice to say, it wasn't without risk. I sent this away to Vancouver to be analyzed by a Professor Smith, an expert in his field. This is a page from his toxicology report. Among the nasties, it revealed tricresyl phosphate, an organophosphate, like sarin, the weapon of mass destruction. Tricresyl phosphate is found in the engine oils. It was also found in my blood. So I know that I was exposed. The airlines know it. I sent the toxicology report to the British government, so they know it too. But uh, nobody cares. After almost seven years, as it turns out, the last seven years of my life, I've had to accept that I'll never change anything. This is just too big. But my biggest regret, apart from not being able to see Izzy grow up and start a life of her own, is that I never stopped you from flying, Isabel. And knowing that you were in danger too, my darling. Some things in this world are more important than any cause. That's it. I love you. Hello, it's Natasha Stevens here. May I speak to the Countess of Mar, please? Thank you. Hello, Lady Mar. No, ha it doesn't! This report proves the toxins were in the engine! And the bleed air ducting from the engine takes air to the cabin! cabin. Prove it! Is it true Captain David Morris was still on the payroll? He's dead! When he died, he was JASP crew. Do you realize what that means? In service death payment and... I don't mean financially. That man was a thorn in our side for years. If there's an inquest... Why would there be? He died of natural causes. If his family press for a hearing, JASP will be dragged into if it. If we have nothing to hide, then we have nothing to worry about. Sorry, mate. I'm sorry to have to deliver an ultimatum by email, but you never pick up my calls. Oh, and... I'm sorry, but uh, Joe. This is a fantastic opportunity. You're only on a temporary contract here. You'll be close to Salford Media City. We can move up north. You can forget about all this stuff about fumes. My job is safe. Your job is safe. Yes. When I left the agency, I thought I was doing it for you, for us. A new life together. The Sussex standard job seemed just that. A nice little local number, time to settle down. I realized 
I'd been putting my career ahead of you. Just like what you're doing to me now. But when I could help your job prospects with a bit of investigative journalism, that was fine. I wasn't running after you, Joe. I was running away from that cafe, that gunman. And you know what I learned? I've learned that some things in this world are more important than any cause. And you're not one of them. Joe and me, it's over. One more question. Small artisan galleries to international businesses with collectors and interests around the world. And um, I suppose, really, though, this value still is in the pleasure you get from the art. And now, from Johnny's high flying London art gallery to the boss of high flying something. Jasper! Mr. Charles Jasper. Okay. Great to meet you. Good to meet you too, Johnny. To paraphrase Darwin, it isn't the strongest or the most intelligent that thrive. It is those that respond to change. I see. So does that mean your airline will be responding to calls for changes to the way in which air is provided on board your aircraft? This shit was not on the approved list. Just, just cut it. Oh. Cut it okay. now or else. Cut now, commercial break. Jasper would not command the market it does if we didn't look after our staff in exactly the same way that we... We're off air now, Mr Jasper. One more question. Captain Morris's claims that the fumes on board the aircraft... Captain Morris's claims that the fumes on board the aircraft he flew for your airline were slowly point... Who the hell gave you the authority to cut me? Don't you dare interrupt me! Listen to me now! I want to get to the bottom of this. 8 a.m. My office tomorrow morning. We need to get to the bottom of this. I want a meeting with you, and so I'm head to go to roll. Don't you backchat me. Seems a bastard's in some fat cat pheasant shooting syndicate with a lord and master. Put in the call and bang, feathers flew. Do me a favour, will you now, this bastard? That's the plan. Even high flying tow rags have got an Achilles heel. Word is his is his new CEO, Tyrrell. Because? He's not tough. Well, he's not ruthless enough. Made a mine of business news, gives him six months of jasp tops. I shall have to follow Charles's example and confiscate that phone. Who's going to have an ice cream when we get off the train? Me. Four ice creams. Listen, darling, I'm going to have to leave you there. Um, something... Something at work. I'm, I'm sorry. I wrote your letter. Resignation. Did you send it? It doesn't matter to me, you know. All of this. The big house. The chauffeur. You were with us more when you spent months on the oil fields. Please. Tell me what's wrong. Perfect couple. Oh. Just ask her out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Looks good. Molly, I've got a present for you. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Daddy, look. <laughs> I was helping to dip the sheep when my husband got quite cross with a rather recalcitrant lamb. When he finally caught it, he dipped it in the dip with such a splash that some of the tidal wave went into my boot. In the winter, we used to keep them in here, but as you can see, it's uh, out of use now, a bit yeah. old and scruffy. Oh. So tell me, why were the sheep dipped? To prevent scab. We were required to dip the sheep twice a year using products recommended by the Ministry of Agriculture. Products containing organophosphates. Nothing on the container indicated that the contents were poisonous. And as for the health and safety recommendations, utterly inadequate, as I quickly discovered. I remember, I just had to sit on that log Runny nose, tight chest, headache. I'd no idea. I should have immediately removed the contaminated clothing and washed my skin. Dipper's flu, they call it. Three weeks later, the full symptoms set in. I thought I was dying. Mr. Adamson, allow me. Ah, <laughs> not more aviation porn. Come on, flying is his life, not just his life, he would. Once an anorake. Some more onions, Pete. Did you know Captain David Morris? Name doesn't ring a bell. Only his widow remembers you. It's all on there. Oh, there's a Professor Hart who's done some very good work into the working environment. Now, she lectures all over the country. But there must be some kind of EU ruling or something to prevent this kind of thing. Oh, there are lots of acts, just not enough action. Legislators tend to focus on the aviation industry's impact on the wider environment, not the cabin environment. But Captain Morris had proof organophosphates were in the bleed air ducts and there was no... Even so, there are no standards to say what is and isn't safe. Keep going. The media can shine a light on some pretty dark corners. And if we do, would you be willing to ask questions at the House of Lords? So, her latest plan is to use health and safety legislation. Smart lady. Why? Well, Al Capone was eventually jailed for tax evasion, not murder. Huh. Oh, on a lecture tour. She can give you 20 minutes. Right. Well, let's get this week started. <laughs> Not you two. Shut the door. I've had a phone call from the father of that young girl you did the RAF story on. Hmm? Not a happy bunny. I bumped into him at a fate. I said I'd back you on that story, but... You I... can't back out now. I have calls in with Jasp to interview Tyrrell. You're running out of time. We can nail this. And I'm running out of patience. This could be the biggest story we'll ever break. Do you really think Adamson knows something about this toxic air stuff? I'm certain. David Morris's funeral is in Sussex. We can legitimately cover it from a local angle. Let's push a few buttons. Hello? Johnny? Yeah. One more complaint from a reader, and she's back on her bits. Helen? Yours will be the first one.
I've called three times and... Yeah. Yeah, I know Mr. Tyrrell is a busy man, but... OK, if you could just give him my message, will you, please? Professor Hart, Helen Eastman, how do you do? She's a reporter, not the BMA. I never reveal my sources. We had a routine appendicectomy today. Well, routine until we try to wake her up in recovery. Nothing for 12 minutes. It's as if she was in a coma. Second time it's happened. The first was three weeks back. Exactly the same thing happened after we pinned the fractured fibula. Unresponsive for nearly 10 minutes. So... I checked the patient's records. They're both air crew. Where did you get this? From an airline captain's widow. Breathes what? That's a serious flight safety issue. I know they're JASP Air, but other than that... They're copies of aircraft technical log pages. Tech logs are the primary source for recording data on each flight an aircraft makes. So an aircraft captain routinely keeps records like this? In the aircraft, yes. But not in his personal records. He must have copied these secretly. See, the pilot will enter any defects here. This airline safety report, ASR, would have been sent to the airline safety department, then on to the CAA, the aviation regulator. So the captain has reported his worries. But engineering has fobbed him off, returned the aircraft back into service. So the airline's flying aircraft that aren't... Airworthy. In a regulatory sense, yes. Just as worrying, this shows the regulator is turning a blind eye. So how do I prove that passengers and air crew are being exposed to dangerous toxins? For he knoweth whereof we are made. He remembereth that we are but dust. The days of man are but as grass, for he flourisheth as a flower of the field, for as soon as the wind goeth over it, it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endureth for ever and ever upon them that fear him, and his righteousness upon children's children. To thy hands of mercy, most merciful Father, the soul of this our brother departed. And we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech thine infinite goodness to give us grace and live in thy fear and love and to die in thy favour. But when the judgment shall come which thou hast committed to thy well beloved Son, both this our brother and we may be found acceptable in thy sight. Grant this, O merciful Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only Saviour, Mediator and Advocate. Amen.
Got a flat. What? Got a slow flat by the looks of it. There's something on your car here. I've never seen it. I don't know what it is. Hang on, hang on, don't touch it. I've just got to take a photograph. Hang on. Okay, um, you just uh, look. Okay. Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, sure. the aircraft that did flight 313. No. Think about it. It's really important. I need to get on board the aircraft that did flight 313. Please. Nothing on email, but she's been browsing our flight schedules. Flag her name. If she books onto any of our flights, I want to know. What's wrong with using your own car? Is that what I think it is? Under my car. It's interesting. It's getting a bit Woodward and Bernstein, isn't it? I want to try again tomorrow. What happened? How? Shit, everything? Phones? Emails? Yeah, that's, that's what Woodley said. Look, Flight 313 was not the first time crews have been impaired. Some were totally incapacitated. But there have been incidents all over the world. It's a global problem. Yeah, the Countess of Mar is going to raise it in the House of Lords. But you have to prove that passengers are being exposed. Yeah, OK. Look, take care, all right? Checked in on the Glasgow flight. No checked baggage. She's on her way to the gate now. I think she's booked on the next flight back. Yes, boarding starts in nine minutes, sir. I need to know whether. Yeah, wait a minute. Sir, do we deny her boarding?
Business or pleasure? Hopefully both. Have a good flight, Miss Eastman. I'm sure I will. On board. Thank you. Miss Eastman, I believe you left us at the gate. Oh, thank you. Jazz 308, Taxi Quebec, Juliet, Juliet 1. Hold short, runway 08 right. Please take this out and study it carefully. There are six emergency exits on the aircraft and the cabin crew will point these out to you now. There are two at the rear, two overwing exits, and two at the front. Just 308, clear for takeoff, 08 right. Just 308, clear for takeoff. Right, let's go. Nothing to report. Yeah, that's what troubles me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are just lost. To your coffee, madam. Right. How about you, sir? Weather in Glasgow is coming. It looks like she's coming your way. Okay, I'm here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect. And the AV Lee. 
Mr. Tyrrell, Helen Eastman, Standard. I know your background, Mr. Tyrrell. The Delta Bravo rig in 2005. The world is in your hands, Jasper. Yes, I was breathing on board the Jasper aircraft that I flew was pumped full of dangerous toxins. In California, it's common practice to check patients for organophosphate exposure before... Before what, miss? Helen Eastman. Before an anesthetic, Mrs. Tyrrell. Air crew who have been exposed to toxins in flight have needed emergency treatment to bring them round. This has nothing to do with Tanya. She's not at risk. She'll be in the best of hands there. Of course she will. But don't the crew and passengers exposed to these chemicals deserve the same chance, don't they? Thank you, Mr. Eastman. I think we've heard enough. Thank you. She's down. For her operation, I'm not turning to those tests. And if that got out? Eve? Jasper would be crucified. Ben, you can't just ignore this. Not just for Tanya's sake, but for all those people who get on your planes unaware of what's going what on. What might be going on? Might. The man I married wouldn't take that chance. And if I do something, I'm ruined. There's no middle ground here. I... We're off, darling. You're right. Thanks a lot. Air cargo accounts on average for about 12% of industry revenues. This is just 2% lower than business class revenues and has the potential to impact positively on slim margins. But we must prioritize the e-cargo environment, secure the supply chain, 
ensure dangerous goods regulations are followed. Focus on environmental sustainability. Finally, it's vital that we speak with a united voice on collective issues that affect us all. Gentlemen, everything all right? Yeah, fine. Mr. Tyrrell. Thank you. Your choice. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a man who has become synonymous with the aviation industry, one of our country's greatest entrepreneurs and chairman of JASP Air, Mr. Charles Jasper. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Well, thank you for inviting me to come to this conference. As you are all aware, it has been yet another challenging year for the aviation industry. <laughs> Combine these factors with further increases in central government taxation, and I think you will all agree that Just Air's results demonstrate not only the resilience of our business model, but also an enviable reputation within the industry and with the traveling public. While our competitors have struggled, JASP has enjoyed growth. In the information packs you will be handed after this conference, you will find details of our load factors, revenue generation data, that will form the focus of our strategic plans for the coming decade. But before I hand over to Ben, I'd be happy to take questions from the floor on anything I've covered so far. Ken Brown, Aviation News. The punctuality statistics that you referred to, are they internal or government figures? Those are the latest CAA figures, Ken. Julia Stahl, Germany. Can you please confirm last year's load factor? 64.9%. 64.9%, yeah. That is what I said. Helen Eastman, Sussex Standard. Congratulations, Mr. Jasper, on exceptional results. Would you agree your airline's success stems mainly from the public's trust? The airline's ability to get them safely from A to B. Our unblemished safety record is a reflection of our commitment to our customers. And what would you define as safe, sir? flying a passenger from A to B in one piece, or flying a passenger from A to B without harming them. The Civil Aviation Authority states... With respect, we all know the Civil Aviation Authority is funded by the airlines. I'm asking you, Mr. Jasper. I'm sure your passengers believe they are breathing clean, fresh air when they fly, that there are no toxins on board passenger aircraft, right? This is a preview of a little clip going up on YouTube later. It's me on a JASP flight to Glasgow. Now, here I am taking a standard swab sample from the cabin walls. Now, in a moment, you'll see in this row here, it's just coming up in a moment, there she is, seven months pregnant Mrs. Sally Compton. Mrs. Compton expressed a strong desire to see the results when we got them back. Which were negative, of course, for anything remotely Problematic. Yes, unsurprisingly, the results that you knew about were. But wouldn't you like to know about these? Remember Flight 313, taken from a JASP cockpit. We are in your debt, Miss Eastman, for providing delegates today with further proof of JASP's diligence in ensuring our customers enjoy the safest and most comfortable flights. Mr. Charles <laughs> Jasper, ladies and gentlemen. As our chairman has hinted at, these are indeed exciting times for JASP. 
Today, I would like to outline how we propose to continue that momentum with innovation and a commitment to the people who put us here today, our customers. Ms. Eastman, please stay. I think you'll find what I have to say of interest. Forty years ago, Charles Jasper founded an airline with ethics. An airline with vision. The British aviation industry has been blessed by his foresight and drive. And today, I can tell you that JASP is at the forefront of a new era. As well as our new livery, I can confirm that 16 new routes are being introduced over the next 12 months. And I'm also able to tell you that our chairman's vision continues to set standards for aviation around the world. Ms. Eastman made reference to the air we breathe in aircraft. We understand that even in today's modern jet air travel, that many of our customers find traveling unsettling. Scare stories appear in the press from time to time, but they sell newspapers. <laughs> However, nothing that might affect safety is ever ignored, no matter how far-fetched or unlikely. As part of this process, the industry has carried out studies on air quality and aircraft, and the results have confirmed as you would expect, that the air quality is pure. Yet still, this is an issue that raises its head in the press and causes concern for some vulnerable passengers. At Jasper, we believe that whether a problem exists, or even if there is a perception of a problem, that we must do whatever is necessary to allay our customers' concerns. Our passengers, after all, are our business. Today, I can announce a world first for aviation. JASP Air is in advanced negotiations with a leading filter manufacturer to install air filtration across our entire fleet. This will be complete within two years. Not because there is a problem, but because of the public's concern of a perceived problem. JASP Air will be the first airline to do so in the world. Combined with our order for eight new Boeing 787s with revolutionary bleed-free technology, our customers will be able to breathe easily about their safety and comfort in the world's purest cabins. Thank you. Two options. We have to act. The industry's battle of denial has to end. The public can't be kept in the dark any longer. But the cost will be... Covered by adding a pound to every ticket. It won't hit our bottom line by more than 0.001%. Do you remember how the crew on the Apollo 13 mission nearly died? It was a system failure. It was an air quality problem. Those men worked out how to filter the air. They not only survived, they became heroes. Next week's Sunday Express, hopefully. You did it. Thank you. They did proof positive. You knew they would. Carcinogens, toxins. Captain of Flight 313. 150 people could have been killed because of an oil leak. And you know what the air accident investigators would have concluded? Pilot error. Now I get why you backed off with Jasper in there. You'd already got to Tyrrell. Mr. Ben Tyrrell, Jasper's Achilles heel. But Tyrrell said that... Do you really think the industry will let them fit filters in their aircraft? even if they wanted to. The admission, the legal implications, it's just too big. But we'll see. It is almost 60 years 
Since the danger of fumes seeping into the cabin air was first reported, with the notable exception of the new Boeing 787, virtually all passenger jets still have flawed and potentially dangerous bleed air systems, a design that leaks pyrolyzed oil into the air supply. Would the minister agree that most shocking of all is the fact that airlines fail to inform passengers when they have been exposed, which, and I have chosen my words carefully, must be a breach of every passenger's rights and casts a dark reflection on the aviation industry. What solutions does the minister have? <laughs>